All right, welcome back. We've got uh, a very complex deal to try to work through this morning uh, that may or still may not happen. I'm referring here to Pershing Square Tontine Holdings, PSTH. Remember, of course, the largest SPAC that was out there. And remember, it was issued at 20, not 10, uh, raising an enormous amount of money uh, for Bill Ackman, who, who's the sponsor. And we've all been wondering, or many of us who follow these things, what would he target? Because uh, given the size, it had to be a very large potential business. And then we've gotten this potential deal that is not a SPAC deal um, it, at all, and it's incredibly complex. Uh, I'll try and explain some of it to you because here's the basics. Uh, they're they're going to acquire 10 percent of Universal Music. Now, Universal at, at a $42 billion valuation, which is well above where Tencent bought their stake, Universal Music Group is going to list on the Amsterdam Exchange. So once it does, those shares are going to be distributed to holders of the SPAC. That would be later this year. This is not a SPAC deal. Um, is the easiest way for me to say it. It is a purchase by this entity of uh, the stake in Universal uh, Music um, that then is going to be distributed to the holders, and the SPAC will live on. But, of course, because Mr. Ackman, I guess, needs to just show all of us how incredibly smart he is. I don't know. I called him. I called you, Bill. I don't know if you're going to return the call to try and explain some of this to me. But uh, they're going to create this thing called a SPARK, so you haven't lost the thread there. Yeah, the spark is not a SPAC, but you're going to basically get <laughs> you're going to you're going to get the hedge fund uh, Ackman's hedge fund going 29 percent of the spark that they're calling it a special purpose rights company. Um, and SPAC investors are going to receive a stake in the new spark, which won't have a time limit to do a deal, but will use the capital that was left in the SPAC and potentially new capital to pursue a new transaction. Following any of that, I guess the real question from my perspective, Morgan, is simply why. Um, in some ways, the $4 billion purchase here, $4.2 billion, given where I think the valuation where UMG is coming in, is similar to what would have been if you'd formed a special purpose vehicle and said, I want to, you know, use, raise money to invest at this valuation that I feel is very uh, favorable. Um, it's not being well received yet in the marketplace no. by those SPAC holders who are, I'm sure, like me and many others, are simply trying to understand fully exactly what's going on here, given all the different permutations. Do you think this is reflective? And again, this actually goes back to the whole meme stock discussion we're having, but reflective of how much money is out there in the market chasing such a finite number of assets right now. Yeah, I mean, I think part of this was always the question was, what can he possibly really do a traditional SPAC merger with? in terms of a company, would have to be one yeah. of the larger companies out there, given how big the SPAC was, how much capital was raised. Now, to be fair, by the way, Mr. Ackman, his, um, uh, his compensation and, and things associated with this original SPAC were much more favorable to shareholders than your typical SPAC mm -hmm. arrangement. Now, I don't know where it all stands. I mean, the warrants go away. Uh, you know, uh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, the d d due diligence is done, but the warrants go away. Uh, exchange ratio. Uh, you know what, Carl? I'm not even going to go there any further than this. We'll come back to it <laughs> numerous times. We'll see whether it happens. I guess the winner here, at least from my perspective, it's got to be Vivendi. They got a great valuation mm. on United uh, Universal Music Group, which, of course, they control. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.